Okay, so now、uh, let's talk about constraint nonlinear programs. Constraint means there are constraints, of course. Okay, and、uh, we are going to first show you why this is particularly a problem when we solve multivariate problems. Suppose I have an unconstrained nonlinear programs. Then we know how to do it. We know we may show the function or objective function is convex or not, and if it is convex, first order condition becomes sufficient. Or if it is non-convex, first order condition can still find all the local minima, and then we may do comparison. And that means as long as we are、uh, patient enough, we can still find the global minima. But if we have constrained nonlinear programs, oh, what should we do? We may still try the following strategy. First, let's ignore or relax all the constraints, and then find a global unconstrained minima. Okay, that's something we may do. If we are lucky that that global unconstrained minima is feasible, then of course it is optimal. Okay, no point, no feasible point can be better than that. So if we are lucky, then it is optimal. But of course we may be unlucky. If an unconstrained global minimum is infeasible, what should we do? Well, let's see some examples. Suppose we are solving single variate constrained nonlinear programs like this. We want to solve this problem. The constraint is that x must be non-negative, and this is a simple quadratic function. Okay, graphically we can see the objective function is like this. Of course, it is convex. You may show it, and the feasible region is here. The unique global unconstrained global minimum is here. Okay, x bar is one、uh, negative one. This is the point satisfying the first order condition. But the bad news is this is infeasible. In this case, we actually know how to do it. All we need to do is to In the feasible region, let's find a point that is closest to the first-order condition solution. In this case, we know the the closest point will be this point. Okay. The optimal solution will be for x to be zero. This is the optimal solution within the feasible region. Why do we know we only need to find the closest point to the first order condition point? Okay,、uh, one thing we need to know is because this particular function is convex. Given that, and given that, all the feasible points, all the points are arranged on a single line. We know if x star is the closest to x bar, then x star must be optimal. Okay. Oh, as long as points are ordered, then the closest point is the optimal. But very natural, we may show that for multivariate problems, this is not true. Suppose I want to solve this problem. Okay, the feasible region is、uh, a polyhedron. Okay, there is just one linear constraint, and then we want to、uh, minimize this uh, again uh, second order functions. In this case, the optimal solution, the、uh, unconstrained optimal solution, of course, is two one, okay, two one、uh, here, and we know、um, the closest, the closer to two one, the solution is better. But we are actually having a、uh, ellipsoid instead of cycles centered at. To what? Okay, well, that's some information we know. So for this convex program, the first order condition point is also infeasible. Okay, here, if you want, you may verify that this is indeed a convex program. Now this is convex, and this is convex, but the first order condition point is infeasible. What's more important is that. Now the 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 feasible point that is closest to the first order condition point is no longer optimal. Okay, this is the closest point, but 
because we are having um parallel uh, of having ellipsoid. So this point, uh, the point at which the binding constraint and the indifferent curve uh, uh, intersect or um, being tangent is the optimal point. Okay, the point is here. So we definitely need another way to deal with constraints. Uh, when we have constraints and we have, in general, nonlinear objective functions, finding the closest feasible point is not a successful strategy. For different constraints, for different objective functions, we need to have another systematic way for solving nonlinear problems. So let's go back to our strategy and uh, let's think whether we may modify it or improve it. The first step we do is to ignore all the constraints and da 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 da. Ignoring all the constraints is, of course, not a very good idea. An infeasible solution no, should actually be bad, right? But if we ignore all the constraints, we are not penalized ourselves for focusing on infeasible points. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is that when our solution process is looking for an optimal solution or a candidate solution, we should try to encourage the searching process to focus on feasible points, okay? Or we should say, we should allow, we, uh, sorry, we should encourage feasible points and uh, give them um, somehow larger objective values in our unconstrained problems. So let's do this. In our original nonlinear program, uh, we have maximized this guy. So, uh, uh, Sorry, let's say we are talking about maximization problems subject to less than or equal to constraints. How may we allow one to violate but still encourage feasibility? We're going to relax all the constraints. But for feasible points, we will add something to their objective value. Okay? If feasible points can get some bonus, uh, bonus point, uh, some bonus or some rewards because they are feasible, then they will have a higher chance to be selected, to be reported as optimal. And then that point, that reported point, of course, can give us more information about the true constraint optimal solution. Okay? So the key is to, for each constraint, let's associate a unit reward to it. Okay? Reward is going to this reward is going to reward feasible points. So if a solution satisfies constraint i, that's uh, reward that solution by this amount. Lambda i is the unit reward quantity, and the bi minus gi of x bar will be positive, or will be non-negative, if this constraint is satisfied. So in that case, if both are non-negative the point, the feasible point x bar, will be able to get some rewards, okay? And if it can satisfy all the constraints, then it will collect all the rewards, and it will have a higher chance to be selected. And then we're going to add this term to the relaxed nonlinear program, in particular to the objective function. For original nonlinear program, but we're like this, so these are constraints. We call them hard constraints because they must be satisfied. We will relax these constraints and then add rewards for feasibility into the objective function like this. And the new nonlinear program we consider is here. These constraints somehow become soft constraints. They may be violated. Okay? But we reward we reward a point if the point satisfies the constraint. Certainly you have a question, how do we decide the value of lambda? Okay, let's assume they are given for a while. In general, there is a way to determine them. Let's assume they are given at this moment. And then, in order to solve those nonlinear programs, uh, at least keep one thing in mind. In this particular problem, lambda should be non-negative. Okay? Otherwise, we are not rewarding feasible points. We are penalizing feasible points. That's not good. You certainly can choose 
to write this as gi of x minus bi, then your lambda i will be negative. But we choose to do this because we think it is more intuitive. Okay? We want to reward feasible points, so we add some positive things to feasible points. So this should be non-negative, this should be non-negative. We're going to define oh, the part here as this particular notation. We call this as the Lagrangian given lambda. Okay? For a nonlinear problem, if we have lambda as Lagrange multipliers, we say this guy, oh, the relaxed or the modified objective function is our Lagrangian. Okay? Lagrangian will play a central role for solving nonlinear programs. And if you had some memory about Uncalculus, you probably have used it to solve some constraint optimization problems with equality constraints. Okay? Here, uh, we're going to deal with all kinds of constraints. Because, you know, um, in general, equality constraints can be expressed as nonlinear constraints. Uh, sorry, inequality constraints. Okay? That's something we will do. Okay, let's do it in the next video. Uh, up to here, please know uh, the motivation for defining Lagrangian and the sign of Lagrange multipliers. And in the next video, we will use them to do some more things. Thank you.